Hello everyone, my name is Jeremy Fox and I'm going to give you a quick overview of CodeKit. CodeKit is a brand new, it's actually still in beta testing, uh, but it is a brand new uh, kind of a toolkit for, uh, as it says here, it says web developers on the website, but really for, for any developers, uh, since a, a lot of this, it, it's mainly focused around like JavaScript and CSS. And as we all know, we can use those on, on the uh, mobile web as well, and, and often do. It gives you all kinds of great features and uh, helps expedite work so you can get stuff done more quickly and even more accurately, really. So this is the website. On here, if you scroll down, you'll see here you can download the beta release, which is what I have. I should I do need to note that this is only for Lion Mac OS 10.7 plus. If you're running Leopard, Snow Leopard, anything less than Lion, you cannot use this. So you must be on Lion. And as you can see, this download will expire on March 20th. Um, I've already had one version expire, but there's a new version that just replaces it and he'll he will, the developer of CodeKit will keep doing this until he uh, decides to give it an official release. And then at that point, he says it will be available on the Mac App Store for about $20. So totally worth it. But I just want to point out down here on the very bottom, there are already uh, you know, a few different videos he's got here. This uh, is probably going to go into more detail. As you can see, each one averages about you know eight minutes long. These will give you more detail. Uh, after you're done watching this, I highly recommend go check these videos out because they're going to dive into things even further than what I am. But uh, this is the website. So as you can see here, the website is <clears throat> incident57.com slash code kit. So that's, that's the website. Go check it out. All right. This is code kit. Uh, very clean user interface, very easy to use. There's not a whole lot you need to do. Really, all you have to do is pull up a directory in which you have uh, files. Actually, that's probably not a good choice there. Let me go to uh, my sources. And since I already have this project in here, I'm not going to drag it in, but you'll just drag the folder. And as you can see, code kit kind of highlights there and it, you get the little plus sign under your folder saying okay once you let go it's going to add everything in that project it's going to add that to your projects so since I've already done it I don't want to do that uh, so I've already got my project in here so what can I do well there's a bunch of things you can do first of all your HTML documents there's nothing really that you need to worry about with HTML documents. They don't need to compile. They're already compiled. They just run on the web. Um, if you ever don't want an HTML document to automatically reload or refresh in your browser, you have this option here that you can check. It will not automatically reload that. Because one of the features of CodeKit is when you are editing any of your files. So like uh, this is my stylus file here that will get compiled to CSS, which I'll be talking about in a minute. But if I'm editing this, immediately after it compiles, it will automatically refresh all the HTML documents for basically the whole site, besides anything you have marked to not reload. The nice thing about that is you get an instant, you can instantly see your changes without having to pull up your browser and then hit refresh. It does it for you. So. That's uh, that's one quick feature. Uh, we'll talk about stylus now. Um, the stylus is a uh, kind of like an abstraction of writing pure CSS. It gives you kind of some shorthand stuff. Uh, if you know anything about CoffeeScript, it's kind of like what CoffeeScript is to JavaScript. Uh, there are also additional uh, replacements or, or abstractions for CSS you can use that are called less and sass and of course stylus. Those are the three that ultimately get compiled down into pure CSS. And I'm gonna pull up the CodeKit preferences <clears throat> because you can see all of them here. So all of these are the languages that CodeKit works with 
and can can help expedite your programming with. So we have less. Uh, you can you can select the folder you want your comp your uh, compiled code to go to. Uh, with SAS, uh, you get the sa exact same options. With Stylus, you get of course the same options. JavaScript, uh, it's the same options. So it looks like this is all just selecting where you want the compiled code to go. Uh, of, now here is where we have a ton of different things that you can select. As you can see, I'm just going to start to scroll down. You've got all kinds of stuff. What this is, is your options for the uh, validation that you choose. So when you're writing your, your JavaScript or your CoffeeScript, which CoffeeScript will, will ultimately be compiled down into, into JavaScript, you have this option to check your, your outputted code against JS hint or JS lint. And depending on what you choose, you get all these options. I'm not going to go into those right now because there's a ton and it would take forever. But uh, yeah, check this out if you, if you download this app. Uh, Uglify JS. Basically what Uglify means is, uh, you probably heard the term minify. That's basically what it does. It uh, just basically makes it ugly. It minifies it so that it's like, almost impossible to read by the human eye. I'm sure some of you, or many of you, maybe even all of you, have seen Minified JS before. Uh, it's not easy to read at all. And that's basically what it does. And what that does for you is it dramatically reduces your file size so you get quicker load times. Okay, here we go. This is where you can select your, select your different output styles for the language that you are currently writing in. So, for example, I do have a stylus uh, style sheet here that I'm writing my uh, CSS styles in. That will ultimately get compiled down to, of course, CSS. As you can see by the small font right here, my output folder is in the same folder as the stylus file, and it's actually the same name. It's just appending CSS to it, and it's actually compiling the code I have in the stylus folder into actual CSS. So when it does that, I have a few options that I can select. I can have the output style be regular so that it outputs it completely like a normally normally formatted CSS file, which means it could actually be kind of long and to have a large file size. Or if I want to save file size and I'm never actually going to actually be looking at that CSS file, I'm going to be mainly editing in my stylus file, I want to choose compressed because that's going to give me a quicker load time uh, on the web. It's going to be a, a smaller file size. Uh, that corresponds here to less as well. You have minified and compressed U Y U I. I'm not quite sure what the difference is in those. I don't write less. Uh, if you know what it is, great. Maybe you can post a comment on this uh, on this post or or update this post. Whatever. Uh, we have SAS, so output style, nested, expanded, compact, compressed, uh, debug info, print selector, line numbers in CSS, print full debug info in CSS. So you've got all kinds of different things you can uh, play with for your different CSS uh, scripts. Uh, next we have CoffeeScript and JavaScript. Same thing here. Output styles, check output with JS hint, JS lint, or do not check output. Uh, same thing with JavaScript. Obviously, JavaScript doesn't need to be compiled, but you can check it against JS hint or JS lint after every time you hit the save button after you've edited it in your file. Uh, then we can <coughs> concatenate and, mini and minify or concatenate imported files. So uh, then we have create output files with this suffix. So it would mean like your file name and then the suffix .js. So these are a few options you have for your CoffeeScript and JavaScript. Then we have pages, which the only thing that this uh, that uh, code kit has as far as pages right now is Haml, which is an HTML uh, templating language that uh, is mainly used in stuff like Ruby on Rails. Uh, I don't use it, so I'm not going to really cover that. I will mainly be covering Stylus and CoffeeScript. Uh, and then, of course, we have our general options. We can show it in the doc or we can show it in the status bar. Refresh projects every five minutes. It will automatically refresh projects looking for new files. Or new, ch or new changes. 
uh, automatically remove missing files after a refresh. So if something you've deleted, it will automatically remove it. <clears throat> so you no longer see it in CodeKit. Uh, here's what I was talking about with reloading the browsers automatically. Reload browsers, you can select the browsers that are compatible with CodeKit. So you have Safari and Chrome. And then the active tab in the frontmost window. So when you uh, when you when it refreshes, it's going to refresh the uh, obviously the active tab in the frontmost window. Uh, it will refresh whatever you select here. So for example, I don't really write a whole lot of Ruby on Rails, but <clears throat> the default the default web server that uh, comes with Ruby on Rails, I believe, is Webbrick. And when you start that guy up, he actually starts. Uh, your local host on port 3000 so to get to that local web server to test to to see your changes uh, on a, in an actual web or in, in the actual browser you would need to hit localhost colon 3000 so if I was developing in Ruby on Rails using stuff like Haml and CoffeeScript um, and I was running CodeKit every time I hit save after editing a CoffeeScript file or a Haml file would automatically refresh the uh, the browser on localhost 3000 as well as localhost and uh, I could instantly see my changes then we have other things here I'm not gonna really discuss you can play around them with them on your own alright as you can see it just refreshed automatically right there so let's uh, let's play around with stylus for a quick second here so we can see some of the output styles I'm going to be using Coda. Uh, let's see, Coda, please. There we go. So this is a stylus file. As you can see, it does resemble CSS uh, quite a bit. All of the selectors are the same. You know, you pound for ID, uh, period for class. Uh, there are a bunch of advanced features that you get with stylus. That, of course, I'm not going to go into because this isn't a stylus class. This is a code kit uh, overview. So real quick, let's uh, let's go ahead and throw a new div in here. I'm just going to create a new one in here. Uh, I'm sorry, not a new div. A, uh, we'll just create a new class. We'll call it my new class. Now, notice I don't have to use braces. I don't have to use curly brackets. I, I don't have to use colons. I don't have to use semicolons. I can just quickly and easily write out what I want without having to worry about all that extra what I call quote unquote junk. Just gets in the way, takes up time. It actually makes it harder to read. It just, it gets, it's horrible. I hate it. So we're not going to use it when we write in stylus. So let's, uh, let's put some properties on this thing. Let's, let's give it a background color of red. And we'll give it a border, one pixel. Notice I'm not using commas. I'm not using anything. All I'm doing is just writing it out as 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 I would like, without having to use all the extra stuff. One pixel solid, and then we'll give it a color of white. Sure. Okay. Now, when I click save, Code Kit is going to instantly see that I've added this new class here. It's going to see this new code. It's then going to compile this file down into actual CSS. So if we open up, see where it is. My CSS folder here. So we have my stylus file and my CSS file. When I hit save, as I'm going to do now, there it is. We have a success, a successfully uh, compiled stylus file. So CodeKit's letting me know it was compiled successfully. If it doesn't compile successfully, uh, for example, let me see if maybe I can get it to not compile successfully by putting a bunch of garbage in here. There we go. It gives me, an, it says error, and it actually brings up CodeKit and shows you what the error was. So it says expected indent got outdent right there, and it highlights the line. 